Hi, my friend. Today we have Hometown Charms. We're on, I don't know, what is it? One, two, three, four, five. We're on block five. And we have the Secret Lives of Color. We're in the black section and it is block number 69. Uh, okay, and we're gonna just say goodbye to Norma and Annette for a little bit because they're gonna be off on their way. So we're gonna do a little send off there. So first of all, let's do the Secret Lives. The block both here. So in this section, the color we're on is, where it is, Payne's Gray, which is in the black section because it really is just a very, very, very dark, you know, gray, gray black. And it turns out that Mr. Payne, they just don't know a whole lot about him. He did create a few other colors that were attributed to him. And he was a painter of, no, of you know, exhibiting at a, for a couple of years, but then apparently he got into teaching. So he started being a tutor to the children of the elite. Um, we'll say, we'll never know if it was the strain of dealing with the untalented offspring of London's elite that drove him to find a replacement for true black pigments. But we do know that he was proud enough of this precise mixture of Prussian blue, yellow ochre, and crimson lake to make sure his name stuck to it. So it's a cute little chapter, uh, <laughs> poor guy, but he does have a color named after him. So here is my block. I just love this butterfly print and we are on the lower section. Where is this? So we're on the, this uh, last row and this column, and then I can sew all of that that together and then sew it to the rest and then there'll just be two more sections and that we're doing in October and then all of it will be done. Uh, I do want to show you talking about black because the other day I mentioned this so let's take a look. I was telling you the other day that I don't really have a depth and a range of black fabrics. They pretty much all are the same black, just with different images on them. Not not all of them, but a lot of them. <laughs> and so doing this chapter for The Secret Lives, I was having trouble with some of the shades because I don't have sort of like brown tone blacks, that kind of a thing. All right, so I have a whole grouping here. Like I have a bunch of dots, but I didn't bring those down. But I have a group that, um, is a lot of white based on it and then like here this one is this plaid here is really more gray this one is a little bit more gray but the black the shades of black are uh, there's the one i just used so we'll take that out because that is different it's got a little bit well it's probably because of the gray that's in it but these these shades of black they're all pretty much the same they're just different images you know more white you know, this one has gold or rose gold, but the base black is really the same. Even this one, which is a batik, the base blacks are pretty much the same. So what happened was I went through and I pulled out, this is the one I just used, so I'm gonna put that back. So this one is more, I guess some of it is it will be a little bit more grayed. And then I've got this grouping. So this is what I'm going to be going through. The swans, I've loved this. I did it in, and I used it in an orophil block once. It's so good. Now this one is also, here's you can do, this is more brown. It's got a little bit more brown undertone to it. Uh, and then this is modeled. So it's got a little bit of different shading. It's an older fabric line of mine, the batiks from it. And then also this one here is not quite the black black like this. Most of mine are like this. They have this black as the base and then different levels of other shades on top of it. But this one, and then here you can see this one, that black part is a little bit softer with a little bit more color in it. So anyway, this is what I ended up with for the future colors. So today's block is this shade. Uh, this piece of fabric and I have I'm using the big block so I'm able to cut the butterfly to go in there <sighs> okay there you go this is how you look at your black fabric and let me know when you look at your black fabric um, you know, what do you find? Are you finding the same issue that, so now it makes me want to go, I need to sort of like go to the store and look at the shelving for black fabrics and maybe get a bunch that are, oh, how many, I just need some, that are, <laughs> that are not this regular black, black, that sort of jet black like this. 
like to hear what yours are. I'd like to, like to know that. And if you want to take a picture of it and share it in the community page, quote along with Pat Sloan, that would be, that would be awesome. I think the book, one of the fascinating things has made me look at color very differently and sort of analyze the, num the number of shades that we have. And often, I think maybe in quilt making fabric, uh, there are there, there things tend to be like a similar shade because then they go with what you have. So, you know, that's kind of what's, what's happened, I think. Let's do a little mail call. <sighs> okay, first of all, Okay, I got these, which I don't, they came, draw, you know, like shipped directly to me, but there was no note. So if anybody can own up to these cute little stickers, uh, they are really fun. Lots of sewing ones. Here's the needle and uh, there's scissors and floss and whoops, made with love. There's like a ruler. They're fun. They're real contemporary. I love them. So thank you so much, whoever sent those. All right. Also, we went and had a uh, Oktoberfest dinner with my family and my dad decorated the table. So you can see the table here. I thought he did a really cute job. He loves to do that. And these are the Goomies. <laughs> real, real little tiny Goomy bags. I wonder if these are from, uh, well, they went to German Deli. There's a German Deli in our area and a couple towns over. And so maybe they just sell little ones in there. I forgot to ask him. Okay, we have, okay, I have two others. We're gonna save one of them um, <laughs> because it has a story. So this one is from Becky and Bill in Texas. And it came with this, let me get the right side up. Does it go like this? Yeah, here we go. Look at the card. Look at the little smiley faces inside all the daisies. <laughs> so cute. Okay, so they wrote a really nice note to me. Both of them watched the show. Uh, so I'm waving to Becky and Bill as they watch. Now, they went uh, to the quilt museum in Nebraska and brought me a red ornament for my tree. Uh, we have to talk about the tree because I don't know if you remember last Christmas, but I had darn hard trouble with my tree. So later I'm going to talk about that. But anyways, this is going to go on it. And then uh, some super cute salvage with, look, the mushrooms. Oh, mushrooms. This is from Effie's Wood. If you have that fabric, go cut the edges off for your red zinger. And then her husband had a business trip to Munich, Germany and decided he saw, he saw some gummies there and decided I need some real gummies from Germany, <laughs> the real ones. My gosh, I am so excited. I can't wait to try these. This has a mix, and the mix also has some of the licorice ones, which are a little bit different. Mwah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, and the last one is came from Jill in Michigan, but I've also got a picture from Julie to go with this because uh, Jill said that she found, she, oh, she wrote me a nice note with a super cute card. Look at that. And she found that uh, Martha Negley, who designed the radish fabric that I was coveting, which many of you now think is rutabakers or termit, turnips, this guy. So this is by Martha Negley. It's a old, much older one of her lines, but it's so awesome. Uh, well, look what, look what Julie found. The same line had what looks like real radishes, what everybody thinks of radishes, right? So here's what's on the other one. So there we go. But, but wait, there's more. Look at this picture. This is what Julie found. It's heirloom watermelon radishes. And you will note they are purple like this. <laughs> so you never know what you're going to find out there. So Julie says I've been vindicated <laughs> that there are watermelon radishes with purple exteriors. I love it. So fun. It's so fun that you all think of me when you're out and about. I just love that and that you tell me that I just so appreciate that. Uh, it just makes my day. All right, what else? Let's see, um, Hometown Charms, right? Let's see, what do we have for Hometown Charms? We are on block five, which is going to be holiday celebrations. So here is the pattern. Whoops, here's your worksheet. And the holiday celebrations is what do you do in your hometown that might be the most fun for the holidays? Uh, it might be, um, you know, that is sort of a unique holiday for your town. Maybe you have the garlic fest, something like that, or a tulip 
festival because you have a lot of tulip grower, growers there, um, you know, something like that. So the mod, the um, ambassadors have some of them have given me their hometown um, holiday things. <clears throat> so I wrote a bit in there about mine, but I'll expand since we were talking about Germany. When we first moved to Germany, uh, we my parents were only expecting to be there 18 months. My dad was there like almost 10 years, and. <laughs> I was there eight years. Um, so they they um, got an apartment, you know, for us. And it was right near a fairground. And we could go out on our balcony and just look out and see when the fair, see the fairs, like the Ferris wheels and all this stuff. And there was huge Oktoberfest there every year. And so that was um, Oktoberfest, our holiday. <clears throat> and uh, <laughs> some of you know that. And so that is kind of one of my really fond memories. Okay, where's, what's my block look like? Here it is, all ready. So we're gonna just go on the other side of the table and talk through fabric choices for this because you could go with this a lot of ways. I still consider this the honeymoon phase of picking colors because we don't have very many blocks yet. They don't have like a pattern yet. I, I don't need to eliminate anything yet because there's so few. I can kind of do whatever I want. So this is sort of like love, any block, any color. <laughs> so that makes it, easier and harder of course because you can do anything you want you don't have to sort of look at the other ones and go hmm need to balance it a little bit uh, i am going to kind of do that a tiny bit we're in this bottom section of the middle and so i do have the center and three other blocks to look at so i don't really want to make it the same exact color as this one or you know maybe maybe mimic the color that's sort of uh, crosswise you know uh, uh, from it Anyway, so let's take a look at some options. So once again, here is the block. And you can see from a distance, if you do some strong, darker color here, that gives a pop. It makes it look like the block is almost 3D. I am going to use the background fabric that I, the, what I purchased is calling background for my line for these, for all the lights in this. And that is this one here. So I bought extra, but this is the fat quarter from the bundle. So I'm gonna use that up first. Um, now, what else can we do? So I'll just put that on the side whoops wrong way there we go let's look at a, a couple of options so i pulled a green because i have the green in the trees and the green in the dots um, that's one of the things is the if i put green here it's going to be right next to that border around the house which is okay um, if you as long as it's uh, something that you can tell the difference this is the fabric for the border of the house so you know this one this one's lighter so i think it'll show up fine if i decide to use it so if i did that <coughs> in the corner then I was thinking uh, that these could be the lights because I haven't really played with these sort of chartreuse greens yet. The stripe would be the points and then here and then the center would be the floral. So that's one option. They're all going to have this background. I'm not going to switch that out. Um, okay, so here is this green. And what if I had the taupe? So I've got some of this taupe. Um, it is very, very light. So I think that's a no-go. I don't really want it that light, even though this is cool for the middle. Um, I could do something like this maybe. You know, that would make it a little bit stronger, but I think pretty much I'm not going to, whoops, I'm not going to use the taupe. So those will go back. So I've, I've, the one block that is kind of like the log cabin has the cinnamon color fabrics these sort of cinnamon colors and there's three different options in this fabric line so once again the stripe which would be the points and then this bar and then the middle could be like this now they don't have a lot of contrast so what if I did the darker one in the middle so they now you could do them all I have the colored all the same if you want to make yours all the same you certainly could but I am looking at making that center something different just to see what goes on, see how it works. So that option is good. This one is too similar. It's not worth using it in this block to me. So that is with the green on the surround. So I thought, okay, those are two options with the green out here in the darker area. So what about a pink in the darker area? Now right above it is a, the pink um, 
tulips, and of course the center has the pink tulips. There is some of this turquoise in, for the water, not these fabrics, um, and then there's turquoise over in the log cabin one, which is sort of catty corner to the block. So the tulips in the middle, if I was keeping with that theme, and I would use, I think, this one, which is, it's not a stripe, but it has sort of a cascading vertical, so it gives a vertical look. Or I could do the floral, that's the same as one of the other, this green floral, it's the same fabric as that one. Um, oh, there was another green option too, I forgot that one, these two. I digress. They're nicer, they're heavier contrast. Okay, so there would be this. Now, so I'm debating, debating, debating. Um, I kind of like, I kind of like using this chartreuse and the green just because I haven't done that yet, but also this green goes right against the green around the house, which I'm not thrilled about that. Um, and I don't really want the whole block. This isn't dark enough. What if I did, wait, wait. What if I took the wheat there and did these guys in the chartreuse instead of doing, um, instead of doing the, the green around and I save that for somewhere else because there is a lot of green. So I don't necessarily have to bring green in there again or I could do the, the wheat in the green. I don't always like doing the same pattern, but that actually is kind of neat. But I like, I like the little floral too. Now I did give you a worksheet that shows them side by side. And can you see how when, let me just set this down, how when they intersect, it makes um, the dark one. See, it, make, it can make sort of like an interesting shape. It's like an alternate block there when you have it. Uh, that is, I think, really cool. I could really see this one done because that this dark would really make that alternate block very distinct. Um, see, side by side. Okay, let's just stick it up on the wall there. Like I said, this is the honeymoon phase. It's like anything goes. I don't really need... I feel like I can still do a couple more blocks before I really need to think about color intensely to get the rest of it done and be cohesive. Right now, I can just use what's in the, the package, the fat quarter bundle, because it is cohesive. It's all you know designed to be together and it looks really beautiful. Who won the quilt? <laughs> well, if you looked at the website, you could go back and have looked and I wrote on there that Carolyn won the quilt. And let me read what she wrote. Uh, not sure how long I've been a subscriber. The question was, how long have you been a subscriber? She goes, but a few years, she thinks. I've been keeping up with your posts, your videos, etc., for a long time and have several of your sew along patterns organized in books for when I find my round to it. You know what, you're going to get around to it, right? I watch your video every day with my morning coffee and I look forward to it as much as having her coffee. And so Carolyn, I have her email, she's written back. I have to put her label on, I'm going to personalize it. And then this was the quilt that's going. So one more time, you get to see it before it goes to Carolyn. And it has the little mug rug up there too. And then here's the backing that's on it, all from the Birdsong fabric. And that will be going out to Carolyn. And please, Carolyn, sh send me a picture with you and the quilt or where you hang it in your, or where you, you know, display it. And I will share it here on the video. All right, to wrap up, we have got Norm, Nanette, and Baby Bob. Okay, so Norm, Nanette, and Baby Bob are all getting ready to go to their next, uh, tr next place. So here they are. One two, three that are traveling. And my friend Annie of By Annie Patterns, you know, she does all kinds of bags and things. So she sent me a, some bags that I could pick from so that I could put uh, Baby Bob and Norman Annette in here and send it along. So they can, it's like a suitcase for them so they can keep their stuff. But I wanted to show these to you so that you could sort of see them. This is a really neat pattern. I'll do it like this. Whoop. So this is a really neat pattern that has um, a, mesh, a mesh front. So here it's called Pack It In Two. So it comes in different sizes. 
Now, I'm just sending them in one of them. I think I'm going to send them in the medium size because that's going to fit in a mailer a lot better. But isn't this, aren't they darling? And there's a little handle. So, like, if you were taking this to retreat, you could make this for yourself, for your project to go in here. The mesh is so nice. Nice and airy. And then there's a littler one. Uh, but this is too small. So I think I'm going to put them in this guy, in the medium size. They're going to get folded up in here and packed in a box and sent off to their next stop. See, won't that be cute? There we go. And so Annie's bag can go along with them. I'll link you down to the pattern at my website and uh, over and under here at YouTube. So they are, they're so nice, just so nice. Now, <clears throat> as they go along on their trips, it'll probably be, you know, like two to three times in the month that you'll get to, you know, see them. It just depends on where they go and how long it takes them at each place to kind of do some things with who they're visiting. And then they'll go and on to the next location. Probably towards the end of the year, they'll ride back here for a little break and then go on and do a few more tours. So that's kind of how it's going. So you just have to watch all the time to see when they're going to show up. Okay, here you go. Your holiday celebrations in your hometown. I would love to hear about them when you share your block. So I love you. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.